just because there's a theatrical curtain doesn't mean anything epic is gonna be happening in this video. You guys saw the title, it said Enneagram. The reason for the curtain was essentially because uh, I just found it on my little video tool website that I can use and it looked cool so I threw it in there. But yes, it's just gonna be, we're talking about the Enneagram. But in this video I found like a, uh, a paid version. I think it's like 10, 12 bucks. And it's on the, uh, here, it's the um, Enneagram Institute website. It's probably not gonna be any different than the uh, free tests. But I figured uh, I'll do this for the first time. It says it takes like 144 questions at 40 minutes. Yeah, but at the end of this, I'll, we won't sit through 40 minutes of me taking some tests because that can get boring, but I'll fast forward through it and, and just be surprised together. Probably gonna be a four or something, so it's not gonna be anything dramatic. But, but we'll do that at the end of the test or at the end of the, uh, at the end of me just kind of describing what all this stuff is, I guess. Really in this video, it's just kind of to quickly touch about what the Enneagram even is. For those of you that don't know, I came into the Enneagram through MBTI, so I met MBTI first as my little friend, and then that started spidering out to a lot of the other things that I found over time, and Enneagram came up pretty soon thereafter. So basically, the Enneagram is a, it's another tool, especially for us INFP types, it does give us that ability to dive even deeper. You know, MBTI is one tool, Enneagram is another. Between the two of them, they're very distinctly different, but they do, uh, they, they, they complement each other well in the fact that there are commonalities between like, uh, so a lot of the INFPs, when they take this, they're predominantly more of a certain type. Four, a four type in the Enneagram is more, the majority of INFPs type is that. Well, not type, but they do, yes, it is a type. So they, they go more to the four. And then there's nines and other ones too that are less common for INFPs, but they're more predominant than the other, out of the other nine. Enneagram is essentially, it comes from, it's split down in the middle almost from the uh, two words of, their Greek words. Ennea means nine. And then the gram or grame or whatever the Greek, uh, if they have an accent. But the gram is, either means like written or uh, drawn. According to Wikipedia, it's said to come from the teachings of a dude from Bolivia is Oscar Achazo, and then also a Chilean, Chile, a Chile guy, a guy from uh, South America. His name is um, uh, Claudio Naranjo, which, assumingly that it is Spanish, uh, we're gonna say that the J is. Veronica and I are trying this new fad called uh, jogging. I believe it's jogging or yogging. It might be a soft J. I'm not sure, but. Apparently you just run. So I'm interested in learning another language. It's it's also, I've, I've found that the, the INFP personality type is one of the ones that are more likely to learn multiple language. We can do it uh, quite well, apparently. And you know, not just one other language, but multiple languages. That's that's something we have skills at. I need to really turn my phone off during these videos. I, I haven't learned my lesson yet. Learning the other language, I'm definitely interested in learning definitely Spanish. That's just kind of something interested in me. All through high school, I was, I didn't do very well in high school. I was. I was heavily bullied throughout then, and it just came to be where I couldn't really concentrate on classroom type studies. I started getting better when I got out and you know, my adult life and all this when it came time to take classes, but another language, we're not gonna learn any of that from me. I am not one of those INFPs who are gifted. I can't even barely speak my own English language. As you guys can see, I mumble and I talk very fast. There is a lot of INFPs that have that slow, steady cadence of speaking, play on words or whatever. Me, I uh, I try to get out of the spotlight as fast as I can. So that has a uh, that has taught me to speak extremely fast, uh, trip over my words because when they come out of my mouth, it's not how it looked like in my brain. So I I just spout them out really fast, and then I just I'm a king of one-liners, get in, get out, and that's just that's okay. So back to Enneagram, which it. I, so the Enneagram is going to focus more on the fears and motivations be, uh, from the nine types opposed to the 16 types of Myers-Briggs, but it's more of a, a guide to how do you get to self-actualization 
type thing and that in the fear is a motivational type aspect. And the MBTI is going to be more of the, uh, how you're going to use your mental strengths or the cognitive functions to build upon those, you know, weaknesses and things like that. So when you talk about nature versus nurture in the psychology world, you guys will come upon that. Enneagram is going to lean more towards the nurture side of things. And the um, MBTI is going to be towards the nature and they're kind of on two scales. Like, you know how they have like introvert, extrovert, One's on one scale to the other. No one's going to be fully 100% extroverted or else you'd be considered clinically insane. We do fall in the mix somewhere. So it's, and that's the thing with nature and nurture. So if you have one scale that kind of favors this one and the other one and that one, it shows that they kind of, they, they, uh, they complement each other in that way as well. So it's good just to have, for me personally, yes, one tool MBTI is great to have, but once you start getting in the other ones, you can just triangulate yourself and just be like, dude, I know everything about myself. It's fantastic. But there's always more to learn, so you're not gonna stop. You got, you're, you, you're, we are seekers. There's always more to learn. I don't know how people become content with, yep, I know me. I, don't, I still don't, I got, I will be finding out who I am till the day I die. And it's just like, I, it's a never ending. I don't even feel like I have enough time. Even today, I'm just like, man, I got so much to do. And when it comes to that, it's not really chores per se or like tasks I need to do. It's about, man, I, I need to learn so much more about myself today. It's just so exciting. You know, people ask me, oh, hey, hey, Sean, what are your hobbies? I don't really have a lot of hobbies. My hobbies is learning myself and just self. I'm pretty boring. I get out a lot, but like that hobbies question of what I like and things like that, I just... They're not, um, and you know, what people are going to adorn from hobbies. Oh, I play this or I, I'm always going to a so-and-so once a week and I'm all the cool activities you can do. Mine aren't really cool, but I don't care. It's going to be, it's just going to be the stuff I like to enjoy. And that's what I do. I'm going to self-research what Sean is. So the nature versus nurture, I found just, uh, what is it? Simply psychology.org. And you could, I'm sure there's millions of websites just to quickly kind of fresh over here. Ooh, there's an ad for a refrigerator. I don't, I don't need one of those. Um, so, uh, let's see. So right here, I kind of found this little, little chart here. If I can figure out how to blow it up. And, oh no, oh no. There we go. So, approaches to psychology. So as you can see, like I was describing the, the nature um, one side of the scale, nurture on the other. Uh, nature is more the biological approach, focus on genetic, hormonal, and uh, neurochemical explanations of behavior. Um, and then you kind of go meet in the middle. You got some cognitive psychology in there, which is said to be that Myers-Briggs stuff, but it's kind of smack dab in the middle. And um, But again, uh, he, more towards the nature side, humanism, Maslow's theory, um, and then behaviorism, all behaviors learned from the environment through conditioning. Your Enneagram is going to be more on this nurture side, um, and your MBTI is going to be more nature, but again, it's not one extreme to the other. They're all just kind of play together nicely. I like to imagine them playing together in like a sandbox with like, like those little sand bucket castle things, and you can like make a little moat with like uh, I used to do that at the beach all the time, make like a moat around the castle with water. Um, it was very... It's a very nice time in my life. Again, you can see this little Enneagram thing, uh, the, the picture, the nine dots and the nine sections. The INFPs are gonna be more in this dreamer category. Also, four wing five, you have the wings uh, on Enneagrams, which predominantly you're gonna have like whatever type you do predominantly, which say is a four, and then you can have a wing off that, which is also like a preference on the side that you're gonna favor kind of essentially second. I know I have hit the Enneagram at four five wing, but today we're gonna learn if it's completely different and if I'm like a one or something. And I think if you're a one, you're not as cool as a four because four is obviously a higher number than one. And that's just has nothing to do with any of this. And it's not the truth. So don't listen to me half the time. Further ado, I'm going to take this test and we will meet up at the end after I fast forward through a bunch of this stuff. I got my little computer here. Let's see, can it zoom in on? No, it can't zoom in. But, oh, see the glare? 
See, I am on that same page that we're gonna, but we're gonna take the tests right now. And it's, it's gonna be extremely boring for you guys. So um, I, got, I got some coffee and, um, and a cheese stick. It's gonna help me get through this testing. Like a bird flying free, flying high. Round the world, more to see. The limit is the sky. I've been soaking up the sun and I've been walking through the rain. Started singing just for fun, sometimes to take away the rain. I've been dancing in the moon. All right, focus, focus. Sometimes I get, that's why I'm not a good test taker. Like I'll sometimes reading books if it's not like really, like I like finding out about myself, but the process to go through it, it's like if it's not, cause this is just reading questions that someone put on there. It's not something that I'm coming up with. It's black and white stuff. I have a problem reading like a long sentence cause I'll get like halfway through it and then my mind will start drifting and then I gotta snap back and that's what I'm doing here. I'm just, I'm not really remembering what I'm reading. I've always had that problem taking tests and things like that. I just. So yeah, like I've been doing it through this test and I'm just, I just want to get to the end. I'm about to just pick a question or an answer or whatever. I've avoided intimacy when I feared I would be overwhelmed by people's needs and demands. See, I still, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> All right, I'm picking, I'm picking this one. All right, submit test. Woohoo! My results are type four, the individualist. My next one is type five. I guess that's the four wing five. Thank you for taking the test. Let's see what else we have here. There we go, growth and stress. General fours are intuitive, sensitive, impressionable, or Im impressionable? Impressionable, right? <laughs> what? I, I can read, I promise I have above. I. Quiet, introspective, passionate, romantic, elegant, witty, imaginative, and self-expressive. Fours get into conflicts by being moody, emotionally demanding. No. <laughs> Self-absorbed, withholding, temperamental, dramatic, pretentious, and self-indulgent. What? I don't like this test anymore. <laughs> but also true. At their best, fours are creative. Creative, inspired, honest with themselves, emotionally strong, humane, self-aware, discreet, and self-renewing. I love the self-renewing part. It's like the... They seek out art, poetry, music, and other expressives that... See, I mean, again, a lot of this stuff, individualistic, all like kind of the definitions of the fours up here with the Enneagram thing. It all, that's how it kind of complements the MBTI stuff. Because if you read INFP, you will see a lot of these same words, uh, intuitive, introspective, and you'll see that in the MBTI world. So that's why a lot of the INFPs do tend to be more of the fours. Relationship issues, yeah, type compatibility, passion, envy. At some level, fours believe that they are missing something that other people seem to have. They feel that something is wrong with them at their best. Personality stuff, dynamics, under stress. Yeah, this thing's got all kinds of stuff. My goodness. Oh, so the type five, that's my second one. The intense cerebral type, perceptive, innovative, secretive, isolated. Generally fives are focused, observant, curious, insightful, ex expert, studious, complex, perceptive, whimsical, blah, blah, blah. fives get into conflicts, the being detached, preoccupied, high strung, isolated, impractical, unconventional, uncompromising, extreme, and provocative. At their best fives are visionary, pioneering, innovative, objective, understanding, playful, compassionate, and non-attached. So yep, 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 yep. And then it just goes into fives. I'm sure it's gonna go into sevens way down there, but we're just gonna stop at sevens and fives and or fives and fours. And so yeah, this is pretty cool. It just gives you a ton of stuff and Again, this is the Enneagraminstitute.com. Your results are clear. They've been emailed to me, so that's, I will read that in my spare time. I am a four type individualist with a investigator type five wing. <laughs> Just one wing, not two wings, so I don't, so apparently I fly in circles.
that's kind of how they designed this whole Enneagram thing with someone with one wing. Exciting stuff. Again, there, there's more tools out there to find out who you are and I could you know, make videos on those because again, even though I've took a lot of the tests, um, it always is good to kind of go back and just kind of do it again just for fun and personality stuff. So. so thanks for Enneagramming it with me today. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. Any kind of four wing fives out there. If you guys got any kind of, I've seen, uh, I've seen some other pretty, that one doctor guy, Joey, Joey Labuco or Jabluki. He's uh, apparently a, a type nine on the Enneagram. He's got a lot of content, INFP content, so I'd suggest going over his channel, but. Yeah, he's a type nine. And again, you could just go into this INFP and there's a lot of different uh, things describing this thing and stuff. So. so yeah, I appreciate you guys hanging out and I will catch you guys later. Uh, Enneagram day out.